Tonight's game features the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers University and the Redmen of St. John's University. Here are the starting lineup for Rutgers at forward number 31, Keith Hughes. And for St. John's at forward number 21, Malik Seeley. For Rutgers at forward number 44, Donnell Lumpkin. And for the Redmen at forward number 33, Billy Singleton. For the Scarlet Knights at center, number 33, Lee Perry. And for the Redmen at center, number 41, Rob Wardan. For Rutgers at guard, number 15, Mike Jones. And for the Redmen at guard, number three, Boo Harvey. For Rutgers at guard, number 23, Craig Carter. And for the Redmen at guard, number 12, Jason Buchanan. The head coach of the Scarlet Knights is Bob Wenzel. Head coach of the Redmen, Lou Carnesecca. So the Scarlet Knights and the Redmen ready to battle at Madison Square Garden. Rutgers on a roll. Six of their last eight. St. John's has lost three in a row. The story with St. John's, Jason Williams out for the season. Once again, a non-displaced fracture of the fifth metatarsal on the right foot. And earlier tonight, I asked Jason Williams about the injury and if he would consider surgery. Well, not really, Bruce, but me and Dr. Glick was just talking about it. He brought the pictures over to Dr. Warren, the x-rays, and we're going to bring the pictures over to Dr. Scott now. And right now, what we're saying is, is the crack is in a good spot and it's got a lot of blood circulation, so um, what we're going to do is just wait the six weeks. we got a lot of time now and see how it heals, and maybe about eight weeks we'll be out the cast and I'll be ready to train. There's Jason Williams on the St. John's bench. I know he'd rather be on the court. It has been a difficult week for him, but right now he is handling the news and trying to deal with it, and that's the mature way to do it, Buck. Oh, yeah, but uh, it's cost him a lot of money. Uh, you know, it's just heartbreaking to have that senior year ruined as his has been after being encouraged, missing the first 10 games where St. John's was 8-2, and two, but that wasn't a steady stream of Big East and Rutgers competition. St. John's in the home white. Rutgers in the visiting red. The official Larry Lumbo, Jim Howell, and Tom Corbett. Robert Werdan for the Redmen. Over to Boo Harvey. Harvey's been in a shooting slot. He needs to bust out, according to Karnaseka. Harvey on the baseline. Pretty dick to Malik Sealing. This is the last catch to the Redmen on the board. That Rutgers zone and matchup is very active. Quickness out there. It's by no means a passive defense the way they played at that first set. Guess what? St. John's, man for man. E. Hughes fires it up. Rebound Malik Sealing. Craig Carter getting the start today for Rutgers University with Earl Duncan out with the severely strained ankle and Duncan had been averaging 20 per ball game over the last five and was really coming on. So that's tough news for Coach Bob Wenzel. Buchanan is open for three. Rebound where Dan puts it up and in. Four nothing, St. John. Going back to our opening, even without Jason Williams, that front line of St. John's is tough. Verdansk got to stay out of foul trouble. The depth is no longer there. Mike Jones penetrates, saves it. 
Carter puts it up and in, and Carter oh, will do oh, flamboyant oh. things, he will do spectacular things, sometimes with a little out of control. I'd say that was about a 9-5. What body control? Harvey outside in Canada. Here's Malik Seeley. Billy Singleton back in the starting lineup. And he gets the roll. The New York roll. Well, even coming in for Jason Williams, who went out early in that Georgetown game, Singleton was able to come in with a double-double. He's a proven commodity. The, the real concern for St. John's is leadership and outside shooting. Only two minutes gone by. Bob Wenzel already wants a timeout. St. John's 5-4 to stop the possible run. Bourdain playing big inside, the biggest guy on the floor. He's been in foolish foul trouble over most of his career. That time he spaced out nicely, went back up and in. This is by no means a Big East front line that St. John's is facing tonight. But they're quick, and right now they're a very confident team is Rutgers. Rutgers only lost in their last six to number one ranked Missouri. After they were ranked number one, they went to Columbia and they played extremely well. Losing by only five. Keith Hughes got it. And he can do it from the inside and the outside. To Harvey for the Redmond. The Jason Buchanan. Harvey for three. Rebound to Jones. Mike Jones, nice look up court to Lumpkin. He hits it. And Donnell Lumpkin, the three ball threat. Puts a two, a rare two for him, and we're tied in set. <laughs> That's exactly right. He's taken 90 shots, 60 of them are, are from the bonus sphere, so he was really out of his range. Good Robert were dead out to Boo Harvey. Malik Seeley caught the traveler. Boy, that defense is active. You know, the mindset when you say we're playing matchup, we're playing zone, it's kind of passive. These guys really move their feet and hands. He is sustaining it. St. John's will be very deliberate. He's going to stay on defense quite a while if they, if they don't get the shot they're looking for. Keith Hughes outside. Donnell loves it. Back to Hughes. They play the two-man game, and Hughes connects. He's averaging 18 and a half per ball game. The transfer from Syracuse and Rutgers with their first lead. So far, St. John's not doubling down to help inside. They're letting their postmen go one-on-one. -on -one. That's uh, not a sign of great respect for Rutgers' front court. Harvey to where Dan loses the ball. Very active hands by, by Rutgers. The Redmen have dropped three straight. Knocked out of bounds. St. John's will keep the ball. Brunel Lupkin not intimidated at all. His first garden appearance. This guy has really tried to shove him out of the way. Shoved him right back. 12 seconds of the shot clock. We're Dan. Short J, air ball, rebound Singleton, stepped out of bounds. And out of the backcourt, Mike Jones, a 6'4 freshman. Rutgers starting two freshmen and two juniors. The lone senior is Lee Perry. A bomb by Lumpkin, rebounded by Buchanan. Here's Buchanan to the front court. Back to Boo Harvey. Boo off balance. Foul called the time Jones and Boo will shoot two. Boo Harvey penetrating that time. Jason Buchanan also Rutgers down in the paint. There was nobody for St. John's from the free throw first. line back. They were very vulnerable to the break that time. And Scarlett, the Scarlets like to run. That guy was a pretty good guard. And he ran pretty well right there at Rutgers. Rick Danica reporting into the ball game for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And also into the game is Anthony Duckett, who has returned from a fractured right foot. But that was a non weight bearing fracture, and therefore he only missed five ball games. So Duckett is back. By the way, Tom Savage, who was the leading scorer on last year's club, has been declared academically ineligible. So he will miss the remainder of the year. He has left school. And they're hopeful that he may be able to reapply and be readmitted next year. Academic problems for Tap. Here's Carter. Hughes for three. Rebound Buchanan. 
think John's down one at the 15-50 mark of the first half. Sealy with the gliding move and a foul is called. Had a John Hughes. Boy, that was a big time move, Bruce. He showed that jump shot never really stopped, so he didn't have to overcome inertia and just kind of glided right by. That's a tough shot. Malik Sealy goes to the free throw line. Mr. Consistency. Malik Sealy on the line. Double figures, 29 consecutive ball games. And he is just 205 points away to becoming the fourth St. John's Redman to get 1,000 points in two years of varsity play. The three before him, pretty good names. Mel Davis, Chris Mullen, and Walter Berry. I'm amazed with St. John's great tradition. There are only three other players who have done it. So St. John's has never been what you call a high-scoring team. But that, uh, that is amazing. They've had some great ones. And Louie doesn't play a lot of freshmen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Got to to Duncan. Outside Lumpkin. Lumpkin launches one. Rebound for Dan. Nice outlet to Buchanan. Buchanan to steal it. Just missed it. And Danica comes down with the ball for Rutgers. Craig Carter penetrates. And a rebound to Buchanan. Strong rebounding guard. This is, uh, this tempo, much more to Rutgers liking. Singleton got it in a foul. And he didn't get off the ground much, folks. Maybe about six inches. Oh, uh, you think? Sometimes you watch him play and he gets a rebound and you don't think he can jump over the New York Sunday Times. He got whacked on that one and was strong enough to finish. He knows how to play. That's the highest compliment you can give a guy. He knows how to play. Mike Jones are in for Rutgers. then on the perimeter, just a straight feed inside. The red jerseys in that quick matchup collected quickly, but not quick enough. Real good opportunity for Billy Singleton now that Jason Williams is gone for the year. He started the first 10 ball games of the year when Williams was recovering from the fractured foot. Lost some time in the middle, and now he'll get it again. 11 to 8 on the scoreboard, 8 to 1 in the rebounding department for St. John. Bob Wentz are two big concerns for this ball game as Hughes walks. He said, number one, how are we going to score without Duncan? And number two, what about the rebounding? What about the board? Those are very good questions. <laughs> Somehow, over the last five or six games, they've managed to solve them, especially with Duncan. Singleton loses the ball off his foot, Rutgers will get it. Dattica, this is a great opportunity for him under these circumstances. Dattica scored 13 in the game against St. John's last year at the Meadowlands. St. John's won 62-61, and it was Savage and Dattica that led the way for the Scarlet Knights. So he's proven he can score. Good follow-up by Darrell Smith, number 32 in the ball game. He's been on a tear lately with 32 points in his last four games. Harvey misses. He's out to Buchanan. Gets his to Sealy. Rutgers got a box down in there. They get the ball on a break. St. John's all over that offensive board. They're getting good shots. It just won't go down. Carter Seconds got to the new sweater after tossing the one. <laughs> Actually, sending it to the cleaners. The one get it there by Dr. Glick, and he opened it up, that new sweater, in the game against Georgetown. First, the truth be known, that sweater walked to the cleaners. <laughs> Win streaks will do that for you, and coaches don't care. Duckett is charged with the offensive foul. St. John's with the basketball, leading by one, 14 minutes to go. First half of play from the guard. Scarlet Knight showing 1-3-1 one, one now, sort of gapping it. Let's see if they trap in the corners. For Dan, nice pitch. Sealy and a foul is called on the knee. Going to be two shots, and the foul is on Mike Jones. Boy, Winslow has these guys jacked up. They have incredible energy out there. They just run and run. Again, making the point, this isn't a passive defense. For Dan in traffic, find Sealy underneath. Airborne. It's Smith that's charged with the foul. Darrell Smith, not Mike Jones. Rutgers watching the Redmen inbound, and Rutgers coming up the field. Danica streaking, puts it up. Followed up by Smith. Danica runs it down. 
Dallas Smith is three. Rebound with Ben. He is dominating the defensive board. Both teams getting good shots, can't can them. And the tempo continues to be quick. We're Dan, baby hook. Got it. Robert Dan. That's a funny bounce. It looked like it hit right in the middle or lower part of the iron, and it managed to go up and gain two inches and go down. Datica hands to Darrell Smith. Sophomore from Shelton, Connecticut. Back to Datica. He penetrates. The foul called by Jim Howell, and it's on St. John. Datica, of course, a big part of last year's club. And this year has been a player who's been used off the bench with Duncan becoming a starter. Now Tom Everson is into the game number 25 of the night, replacing Anthony Duckett. Gattaca was a key spark in Rutgers winning the Atlantic 10 tournament last year, especially from three-point land. It was about this time last year that Rutgers turned it around. It was a different style. It was a pressing man-for-man -man team. It was different people, but somehow Wentzel seems to find the right combination heading into February toward the tournament. Everson knocked away by Werdan, and it goes off of Everson's leg. St. John's basketball, three-point lead. 12 and a half to go, first half. St. John's fans, I'm sure, were concerned how this team would react without Jason Williams. They're not shooting well, but they're certainly not the, the lethargic. Smith goes all the way and lays it in. Darrell Smith coming off the 12-point effort against West Virginia. Already has a couple of baskets, and Rutgers within one. Buchanan, off balance, fourth, rebound, Smith, he's everywhere. He's huge, taken away by Harvey. Sealy goes in. Nice well, back up. Who Harvey making a stand at midcourt. It's really tough to do, but he picked Keith Hughes' pocket and sent it the other way. And it was four red jerseys, not many St. John's guys back. That was a four-point turnaround. Gattaca outside to Jones. Everson gets it back. Rebound Buchanan with some help from Billy Singleton. Wenzel playing a lot of people. Oh, early. good luck by Boo. And a little finger roll by Werdan. And Harvey is starting to pierce the defense. Everson, the seven-footer, a little bit slow getting back. And Rutgers paid for it. Five-point lead for the Red Men. Gattaca, area code range. Funny looking shot was that, that shooting elbow extended out. Not a clean shot, but that was dead all the way. 22nd three pointer for Datica, where Dan very active hits the hook shot. He comes to play. 1915. A lot more room in there without Jason Williams. If there's an upside to things, giving Dan a little more room. The key for him is foolish foul problems. Hughes to Everson. Everson has struggled since he's come off the bench. Buchanan to the front court. Harvey for three. And a bounce off of Sealy. And it's Rutgers basketball. Now we have a timeout on the court. So Boo Harvey leading St. John's with a score at the 10-30 mark of the first half, 19-15. We'll be back. Blue Harvey, the artful dodger. Fix that one clean, and he's going the other way. It's three on two. An excellent pass to Sealy, and Ely, Sealy, slides between the Scarlet Knights to lay it in. Blue Harvey, with a great look inside, hits Wardan, who is four for five already in this game, and three reeves, averaging only nine points a game, off to a sensational start. Where Dan hasn't had a double-figure game in nine ball games. Frontline scoring. Lane Johns with the commanding edge. Carter on the floor for the Scarlet Knights. Craig dishes off to Smith. Knocked away by Singleton. Chucky Sproling for St. John. Sproling. Singleton. Followed up by Sean Udo and a foul is called. Let's set the floor for you. For St. John, Drew Harvey and Chucky Sproling in the backcourt. Billy Singleton, Malik Sealy, and Sean Muto up front. For Rutgers, it's Anthony Duckett, Darrell Smith, Donnell Lumpkin, 
Craig Carter, and with the basketball, Rick Dennett. Lumpkin, reeling on the baseline. Fourth pass picked off by Boo. Harvey penetrates. He throws it away. Duck it to Smith. Look out! He misses the jam. Oh. One of life's most embarrassing moments. The 6'4 sophomore had it all the way. He was flying. He just forgot to go high enough. Strolling, missing the alley-oop possibility as the game is deteriorating into a street brawl right now. And Singleton is hacked as he went to the basket. Wenzel doesn't like the call. St. John's accustomed now to playing with 6,000. Big East play have only five tonight. Bobby Wenzel says that Darrell Smith plays with passion. Well, I, the way he hit that rim, I'm glad he's not my dentist. <laughs> That was like an eight on the Richter scale. Oh. <laughs> Three second Three violation second called violation. against the Redmen. Little heat out there, Bruce. Little heat. There's more than one player playing with passion. It's gotten very physical inside. 9.14 to go. First half of play. Bruce Beck, Bucky Waters will be joined by Tom Curtis at the half. St. John's with a 19-15 lead over Rutgers. Darryl Smith out to Rick Danica. Here's Donnell Lumpkin for three. Rebound Singleton. Harvey. Harvey. John Muto runs it down for the Redmen. Knocks over a couple of pins. Now we get a whistle. No basket. Foul call before. John Muto. Under pressure in the corner, put it on the floor. He looked like a Greyhound bus late coming out of the terminal. Got it out there to the elbow. Quite a second looks concerned, and he should be. Watch this play. Danica with a headlong dive. Misses Boo and the ball. Little hang time. Boo just gets it on the rim. Muto just stays after it. He's been a present. Seelig couldn't put a fork in it. Now Muto gets a what? Double team. Watch him bust out of here. Out of here, guys. Shakes him off and takes it to the elbow. Inspired play from Muto. Even his foul when he came over the back was a good foul for a big guy. You know, not a good free throw shooter. One for nine on the year. That's right. That's not a good free throw shooter. Danica to Hughes. Double team. And the ball is picked off by Chuck Sproley. St. John's converging on D. Eight turnovers against Rutgers. Harvey misses. Hughes is there. Harvey is continually short on that jumper. He needs to get a little more from his legs. He's leaning forward. He needs to get straight up and get over the front of the rim. Everything he's shot so far has been straight. It's just been short. Hughes penetrates. Tipped up and in by Anthony Duckett. And that's where Duck is most dangerous, around the bucket. Always been cast as a too small center as Duck. Seems like he's been around forever, huh? Well, it's his fifth year because he had a, a season where he was injured prior to this one. It's still a single to connect. 86, 87 in the stress fracture of the left the foot. This year is a stress fracture on the right foot. Sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield in this day of corporate sponsorship. Lumpkin for three. Yes. Don now Lumpkin, who was five for six against West Virginia on Sunday and at 18 points. Hit four straight. Boy, his release is quick. 21-20. St. John's lead is one. Ball game being played with a lot of intensity. It's a local rivalry. The players know each other. And Rutgers knows about the Atlantic 10 and the Big East. They want to emerge from the shadow. Last year was 62-61 in the Meadowlands. Harvey connects on a three-point bucket. And the Redmen go back up by four. And Jason Williams was the big player for St. John's in that game. Savage and Datica, the big players for the Scarlet Knights. Lumpkin penetrates. Carter ends up with the basketball. Wide open, Lumpkin for three. Rebound, Hughes. Oh. It drops for him. Keep Hughes. That rebounding advantage that St. John's had early, they're losing. The Scarlet Knights 
more than making up the difference on the board. Hughes that time was walking back to go on defense, and the ball bounded to him. Malik Sealy on the Malik other end, the shooting improves in the part of the Red Men. 26-22, St. John's six-minute mark coming up. Gattaca all Chuck Sprawling trying to pick his pocket. <laughs> Sprawling is a guy who gambles, and that time he got caught. That is only the second team foul on the Red Men, the Star Knights are over the limit. We have a timeout, and I believe the players need it here. Regrouping time. St. John's 5-4. We'll be back. The rivalry 9-7. The first meeting, 74-75. Rutgers won. The last meeting, one year ago at the Meadowlands, St. John's prevailed by one. The Redmen have won five in a row, but there have been some classics, especially in the mid-1970s when the teams Four were Rutgers both outstanding. They played in the ECAC the Metro Playoff. Playoff. They played in the ECAC Qualifying and Tournament. Four, and I was there, Bruce Beck, fellow named Marv David Albert, David used to do you know, some games around the city here. We worked together, Beaver Smith, Frankie Alasia, and Phil Sellers, Bar and yeah, Mike Dabney. Boy. There was uh, some epic battles. This place used to rock. Me. In the ball game, and quickly hitting a jumper is Mark Redden, the freshman from Dorchester, Mass. And Rutgers is within two. The image of Phil Sellers and Beaver Smith going one and one. Still very much, I can see it in my mind. You had to stand up on a chair. You were so small just to see over, right? Oh, that's right. But. <laughs> Here's Eddie Jordan, who played in those memorable teams. He was a part of that 1976 Rutgers club that went 30 and 2. and had the likes of Bailey, Daphne, Sellers, Copeland. One of the toughest things they had to do after losing to Michigan in the first game of the Final Four, had to come back and play UCLA in the consolation game. Thank goodness they've done away with that. Carter on the baseline, and a foul is called. And Carter went to the basket hard, and he'll go to the free throw line for two shots. I, ha I have to believe Luke Karnasek said during that time, hey, guys, come on. This is not our game. We're, we're not a street team. Let's slow this thing down. Let's get some half court. But with that sweater, I don't know. This might be a change of life or something there. Looks like it has racing stripes. Jason Buchanan back in the game Jason for St. John's, replacing Chuck Sproling. Fred Carter at the free throw line for Rutgers, 6'3 junior from Bronx Science High School in Brooklyn. Has only started three ball games this year after starting 56 in a row in his first two years. He's got a two to one assist turnover ratio, but many times he gets up in the air and sometimes over creates. I'm surprised that his assist turnover ratio is that good. He tends to force. He's a slasher. Carter hits one for two. And it's a one-point game with St. John's holding the edge. Five minutes to go. First half of play. Malik Sealy guarded by Donnell Lumpkin. David Keane for the Redmond, a freshman, reporting for the first time. You know, Rutgers could go man for man. They've got St. John standing so mesmerized with that matchup. They could go man for man, uh, which is about what that matchup is. Kane on the penetration. Rebound, Carter. Rutgers can take the lead. Carter to the front court. Stops and pops. Verdana and Duckett wrestle for it, and the possession arrow points possession to Rutgers. To Rutgers. Lou Harvey back in for the Red Men, replacing David Kane. Hard to imagine two teams more different in style. Rutgers has made 128 three-pointers. St. John just 53. And Donna Lumpkin, a specialist at three-point range, hits a two-point bucket, and the Knights lead it by one. Bob Wentz up, clapping his hands. He's got the, that Scarlet Knight defense doing jumping jacks. Sealy asked after St. John. What a first step. Sealy just blew by. I mean, that defense was ready to play. It didn't matter. Seven points for Sealy. Lumpkin. Duck it. Reddit. Connect. A three-point bucket for Mark Redden. Boy, Wenzel's playing a lot of people. Going to his bench. Redden, just a freshman. Very poised on that release. 
Harvey for three. He hits it. St. John's recaptures the lead. This is like skins and shirts. It's a blacktop game. <laughs> it's a fun game to watch. Hughes on single pitch. Hughes gets it back. Don't give him two opportunities. He'll take advantage of it. 18 points, nine boards a game. Really a small forward trying to play big forward on an undersized Rutgers club. Eight for Hughes, one point lead for Rutgers. Three minute mark, first half of play. You can it to Harvey. Harvey is thinking shot. We mentioned in the open, he might be looking to score. Two again for three. He got it, and a foul is called. The three-point bucket counts, and Harvey will go for a four-point play. Wow. Well, this is why they call him freshman. Donnell Lumpkin fouls Boo Harvey. Clearly a three-pointer. That freshman enthusiasm that time was a little late. Harvey with three straight, three pointers. Ten points in the ball game. The foul called on Lumpkin. And Harvey will go for a rare four point play. He's got it. Time out on the court. So Boo Harvey serving up three pointers. And the Redmen leading the Scarlet Knights in this battle of red by three. 7 and 22 before he took over, 18 and 13 last year. Fred Grunninger went out and uh, picked a winner. He should get the Lazarus Award. Coming back to win the conference title the first year, and he's made a complete change this year. They started out man for man pressure. He's changed all that, and the matchup, the aggressive matchup, has been a winner for him. Fourth opportunity, Hughes puts it up. It's still loose in there. And a whistle inside. It is a war in the paint. Wetzel's got to be happy with that effort. Wardan has got to be counted in there. He should be the dominant player. He's not in foul trouble. His red shirts are just climbing his back. The officials are letting him play. That should benefit the bigger, stronger team, which isn't Fletcher. Mark Redden forces it a bit, gets it out to Craig Carter, who resets with 2.14 to go in the first half, and Rutgers down 35-32. Carter to Keith Hughes. Hughes has an opening, puts it up strong. Hughes trying to get the ball back, and does! Buchanan kicks his pocket. Three on three the other way. Harvey, inside. And a foul call as Steeler will go to the line for two. Rutgers gets back very quickly. It's three on three, not usually three on one or three on two. One of the problems for this guy, Bill Carnesecki, and second at two three matchup, he's having problems with defensive balance. Boy, thought about guys on a pogo stick. Bourdain going up and up, just can't get it. Hughes has it only momentarily. He just borrowed it. Buchanan takes it back. And he replaces and Smith. it's showtime. He feels so good just to be out of that malaise. He slides it behind his back. Not much rest for the St. John's guards, though, scrolling a cameo, whereas Wentzel playing a lot of players that could take its toll in the last 10 minutes because the pace of this game has been intense. Eight points for Malik Sealy. He hits the front end to the one and one. Sealy has improved his free throw shooting this year from 56 to 77 percent. Through a good old fashioned hard work. Nice release, nice rotation. Buck Freeman, the old coach, Frank McGuire's coach at St. John's, used to talk about three and a half revolutions on a properly uh, executed free throw. That's that's called technology. Rutgers well behind early in the battle of the board, now doing a sensational job on the offensive play. Carter pulls up. And he is fouled. Fred Carter will be shooting two free throws. Foul is on Jason the Buchanan. Foul charged to Jason Buchanan. Sixth foul That's on the Redmond. And the team six. Second Good personal on Buchanan. Good shot of Bob Wenzel, who survived the brain aneurysm, which uh, a very serious medical problem. Obviously, he's 100%, but 
He's a very fortunate young man. Assistant coach at Utah, Yale, Duke, South Carolina with his old mentor, Bill Foster, an assistant coach with the Nets, and a good run at Jacksonville as a head coach. Craig Carter hits the first free throw to pull Rutgers within four. Scarlet Knights is 71% free throw shooting team. Interesting, Hughes at midcourt trying to save the number of trips he's making. Carter hits both free throws. Coming up at the half, we'll check in with MSG Sports Desk. Dave Sims at the controls. And then we'll check in with the Wizard of Hoops, Tom Curtis. We'll check out what's going on in college basketball, including a look ahead to the NBA draft. That's all at halftime. Harvey out to David Kane. St. John's going with two little guards. Kane is free. Rebound, steal it. Put back. That time Rutgers in a 1-3 and a chaser. Danica was shadowing Boo Harvey. 11 points for Malik Seeley, five point lead for the Redmen. Here's Hughes posting up. Singleton, good defensive job, and this time the arrow points to St. John. Billy Singleton, what an insurance policy. Jason Williams can't play at the beginning of the year. Singleton gives him a great start, they're eight and two. Now, after Jason's injury, here he is back again like nothing happened. I mean, there was never a salt, never a pout. He just gives it to you every time out. Hey, that's Ryan. Single pin, steal it. Taken away by Carter. Carter goes in. And he learned from the mistake that was made earlier by Darrell Smith. He just went the easy route. You and cut, Rutgers within three. You cut your wisdom teeth the first time you bite off more than you can chew, and he was not going to make that mistake twice. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds to go in the first half of play. St. John's with a three-point lead. What a half of basketball. It wasn't textbook, but it was exciting. We're down, and a whistle on Duckett. And that is going to be a two-shot opportunity for Rodan. Larry Lumbo says, in the act of shooting. I don't know if it's a rough play or not, but Rodan very assertive in there. I mean, there wasn't any doubt about what he did. He took, turned, faced the basket, and he put pressure on the defense. He doesn't always do that. A lot of times, his first option is pass but pass parallel or back. That time he turned and went eyeball to eyeball with the defense, put pressure on, and there he is at the line. Limbo, well tanned. He's doing a lot of games in the South. <laughs> Verdan misses the first. The stock ball to Mark Bishop Malloy. And Malloy having another great year in New York City high school hoops. Under Jack Curran, closing in on 600 wins. <laughs> He's been over 600 already, and looking ahead to the state record. Seven seconds left, Redmond by four. Carter penetrates with two, and he's fouled. Good work by Greg Carter. Oh, he just blew through there. St. John's foul, charged to Robert Van. You don't often see that That's against the St. John's defense. Normally, when you break that defense down with a dribble, you draw a crowd, you got to run over people. But he line. just blew through there, and that upset Connor second, justifiably. The strength of his defense is they help each other. And that one was wall to wall. No help. 1.6 seconds remaining in his first half of play. Plenty of time for a Trent Tucker three as Carter hits the first. Watch the arc on this ball. Oh, he really puts it up there. Carter hits them both. 40 to 38. 1.6 seconds. Sealy turns. He fires. And that will do it. That's the end of the first half. So a wild the first half at the Garden. Rutgers 38. The team from New York, St. John's, leads the team from New Jersey. Rutgers by a deuce. The Rutgers played many more people. That may take its toll in the second half. Bob Wenzel went to his bench. I think he has more confidence in his bench. Karnaseka may, uh, especially with his backcourt going all the way with the intensity, they may get a little tired in the last four or five minutes. So it's a two-point ball game at halftime. Coming up will be the MSG Sports Desk with Dave Sims and then the Wizard of Hoops, Tom Curtis. Stay with us. 
Hughes with it for the Scarlet Knights. Goes right up and in. And we are tied at 40. Uh, uh, let's be assertive at the start of the second half. So Keith Hughes runs up a few chests. Jason Buchanan to Malik Seeley. Scarlet Knights stay in that matchup. It's not quite as active as it was at the beginning of the game, but it's still quick. Only four St. John's players scored in the first half of play. Harvey 11, Seeley 11, Singleton, and we're Dan each with nine. And on the miss, Suckett clears the board for Rutgers. He has seven rebounds. Buchanan 0 for 3 in the first half. Didn't look very confident on that one. Rutgers starts the second half with Craig Carter and Mike Jones in the backcourt. Hughes, Duckett, and Lumpkin up front. Hughes takes the baseline. It's tipped up by Duckett. Rebound to Robert Wardan. Harvey in transition. Boo, pops. Sealy. Finally, it's Carter for Rutgers. This is Carter's type of game up and down. Lumpkin for three. He is not shy for a youngster. He came from South Brunswick with his release and range. He could probably shoot it from his front porch and hit the rack for Rutgers Athletic Center. Duckett with another rebound. Rutgers with the basketball chance to go ahead. Just underway, second half. Rutgers has UMass. Big conference game for them on Thursday. St. John Villanova at the Garden Saturday. It's a non-conference game, but don't think it doesn't mean something to the players who know each other so well. Carter. And a foul is called. It's on Drew Harvey for hand checking. The St. John's foul. Once again, Jason Williams out for the year for St. John's with the broken foot. And missing the game for Rutgers is Earl Duncan with a severely sprained ankle. Also note that Jane McGinnis who usually comes off the bench for Rutgers as a bad back. The 6'9 senior will not play or is very doubtful. Duck it. Got it. A two point lead, are you? And Rutgers takes the lead, 42 40. Steely, traveling call. A little music. St. John's timeout. Good move. Red men just not ready to play in the start of the second half. So in the first half, it was Rutgers with a quick timeout. And in the second half, it's St. John's. Series of stats. Well, Rutgers just pounding them on the offensive board. Uh, in fact, they've led the rebounding throughout this game, but they're just not able to get the ball back in the basket. They're giving it the great effort. They just can't quite finish. Rutgers with the basketball after Karnasek had called a quick timeout. The gang from the bank to the old Raritan up by two. Into the ball game for Rutgers and Billy Martin for the first time. Here's Duckett. And Duckett has been a factor on the board. And now going to the basket. He has six points. Rutgers with a four-point lead on a 6-0 run here in the second. Steely to Wardan. Turn around. Gets it. Rob Wardan. Well, Billy Martin off that bench, a 6'6 senior, made a heck of a pass on that last exchange. Both these teams are inspired. Carter with it for Rutgers. Dishes off. Duckett puts it in. Duckett coming off the fine effort against West Virginia with 10 points and 8 boards. Doing it again tonight. Boy, had four big steals against West Virginia in that big upset on Sunday. He's just a uh, senior year, and he's enjoying it. 13 for Word Dan. This was once 18-10 in favor of St. John's as Lumpkin bombs one from three-point land. And the Knights lead it by five. Long distance Lumpkin. Very good. Dial O for Donnell. He just He's, I mean, they're past the uh, college line. He's out there in NBA bonus sphere. Single tip for Bourdain, got it, and a foul. One of Bourdain's real strength. 6'11 big man who has fine vision. Well, now he's turning. The point we made earlier. Boy, nice pass underneath. 
Singleton, for as wide as he is, manages to find the creases. Both those guys are blessed with good hands. Chuck Sproling replaces Jason Buchanan for St. John in the backcourt. So it's Harvey and Sproling and Steely for Dan and Singleton for the Redmen. If you're a St. John's fan, what a time for Sproling to come through. Jason Williams now out. Buchanan not having a good shooting night. This could be the time to break the cellophane on that confidence. Carter with it. To Keith Hughes for three. Yes! Three point goal, three points for Six Hughes. point lead for Rutgers. This is their game, three point shooting. They're going to break all school records in that department this year if they keep up the pace. Already with 128 coming into this ball game and shooting 40%. That's excellent. Harvey on the baseline. Who dishes? We're Dan. Not a good shot. And the rebound of Billy Martin, who has been a force off the bat. Carter. <laughs> now called is on Sprolin. Uh, he thought about it, but not long. <laughs> Never never turn. saw a move to the hoop that he didn't like. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Carter, when he gets that ball, is like a man possessed. He does not believe he can be stopped. Lumpkin, look out from three. He hits it. Rutgers by nine. St. John's needs another timeout. No doubt about it, Karnasek is going to call one here. And he does. Are you lighting it up from long distance? 15.06 to go in the second half of play. Trifecta land has come alive for Rutgers. Long distance here in the second half. They average 15 attempts per game and hit six for about 40%. But a couple of guys from Jersey lighting it up here. Keith Hughes, the transfer from Syracuse from Carteret, New Jersey, gets one. And the freshman, number 44, Donnell Lumpkin, says, me too. Great rotation. String music. Nine-point advantage at the 15-minute mark for Rutgers. Seeley connects on the baseline. Important coming out of that timeout. St. John's needed a hoop. Cuts the lead to seven. Jones, Billy Martin for three. Hughes, great hustle. Harvey intercepts. Harvey penetrates. Nice lay-in by Boone. St. John's didn't have the numbers. That was an assertive move by Boo Harvey. It was one against three, and he found daylight. That's not usual for a Karnaseka team. You don't have the numbers, you hold it up. But this is the game that he loves, too, the wide-open playground game. Sealy knocks it. Strollin picks it up. And St. John's with a chance to cut the lead down. They're down five as Harvey deals. Down the lane in a foul call before. And Boo Harvey's eyes are just lighting up. Jim Howe. Jim Howe says they got him way out there. Look at this effort on the board. What a save. Boo Harvey, boom, the cornerback steals it. Wow, there are three jerseys back. We can't all see him in red. Shake and bake goes right by. Not good judgment by the numbers, but Boo Harvey says, hey, guys, I'm your senior leader. I'm taking you home. Bob Wenzel wants a timeout now for Rutgers. The Wiley veteran being stretched tonight. The Scarlet Knights playing inspired. Jason Williams not here. Earl Duncan, not here, and I'll tell you, it's hard to believe these two teams could, could do it any better. What a college game. Harvey with it. Harvey penetrates. We're Dan with the put back, it won't count. Offensive interference, the ball was sitting on the rim, and we're Dan touched it there, and Carter second is irate. Let's see if we can pick it up. It looked to me like it was hanging on there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. good call. Yeah, good call. Yep. Well, it took Bob Wenzel only a minute and one second to call a timeout after he didn't like things developing. Look at Harvey playing with a vengeance. Boo dishes to Singleton, and he is packed by Carter, and it's two shots for Billy. 
Boo Harvey impressive. The Rutgers foul charged to Craig Carter. That's his third in the team. Third foul on Carter. Hughes, funny looking jump shot. Beats spread way out, comes up with nothing but oxygen. And Boo bullies it out of there. Carter leads with the three fouls. Mark Redden back in. And Billy Singleton at the free throw line. Rick Datica has also reported for the Scarlet Knights. Singleton with a workmanlike performance. Ten points and four boards. Scarlet Knights already have played 11 players. And only four St. John's players have scored. Singleton with 13, where Dan with 13, Harvey with 13, and Seeley with 13. It is a three-point game. St. John's with six straight points. Walking against Duckett. The Duck out of Spring Arn High School in Washington, D.C. Turned out some good ones for you old-timers. Dave Bing, Elgin Baylor, Sherman Douglas of recent vintage. Chucky Stroll nails the three. We're tied at 55, nine straight for the Redmen. Rutgers now going to more structure. Double stack down low. Gattaca missing. Rebound single to. What a turn of events with ball 40 to go in the second half. Strolling for three. Rebound Datica. A vociferous crowd tonight. Down on the baseline, shot missed by Smith. Rebound Strolling, and St. John's looking to air it out for the first time in weeks. Yes, and a foul from Malik Foley. Rutgers have been getting back very well all night. St. John's usually the counterpuncher, now assertive. Really running the floor well. Excellent pass. This time at St. John's with the numbers. And Ely Seely takes a crack and makes it. Boy, they jacked. 11 in a row as Coach Wenzel doing a little teaching about defense. That's why he's got Mike Jones back in the game quickly for the Scarlet Knights. Seely connects on the free throw. So St. John's moments ago down by nine, now leading by three. 12 in a row after being outscored 17 to six to start the second half. Duckett to Lumpkin for three. Jones misses. Strolling, really playing some defense. Again, on the offensive board, the Scarlet Knights get the rebounds, can't can't finish. Oof. Harvey almost nailed the cheerleader of that time. <laughs> Clocked at 94.6. Nolan Ryan would have been proud of that one. I don't think anybody wanted to get in front of it. Carter to Lumpkin. Jones with the short J, and he ends the St. John's run. Jones, strong defensive player, penetrator, the guy that gets every loose ball. Wentz will put him back in this game to get those loose balls, because there are many. Rutgers with the steal, three on one. Jones to Carter. Oh, what a shake move, but he lost control. <laughs> A 360. Back down to Singleton. He tries a little bit of a on the ground 360. And it's picked up and in by Steely. Neither coach could put these plays on the backboard. A, a telestrator here would short out tonight. No way to diagram this. It's skins and shirts. And a three-point lead for the Redmen at the 11-minute mark of the second half. Here's Jones. Outside, Keith Hughes. Lumpkin squares up, fires for three. Strolling all over the defensive glass. Harvey in transition for three. Good. Number 
Darryl Smith back in the ball game for RU, replacing Lumpkin, who will get a seat after missing two or three threes in a row. He'll be back with a lot of confidence in him. St. John's by six at the 10.30 mark of the second half of play. Hughes inside, draws the foul, and the basket counts. Body control Hughes. Maybe it's fatigue. I'm not sure why, but you don't usually see the St. John's defense broken down with a dribble like this. Keith Hughes just puts it on the floor. Bows by Singleton. Good pump fake under control. Draws Werdan off his feet. It's just very tough to do that against the Redmen. They normally are in there plugging those leaks. Keith Hughes at the line. 17 4 run for Rutgers. But Hughes with a free throw here could cut the lead down to three. The opening game of the season, Rutgers went to Syracuse. He got 21 points, 12 rebounds. Put up a lot of shots to get him, but going back home where he transferred from. He's only a junior. He's going to be a good player next year. Duncan and, uh, and Hughes definitely have helped turn this Scarlet Knight program around. We're Dan inside. He goes flat for two. St. John's by five. Doesn't look like either one of these teams are going to punch themselves out. Just under 10 minutes now. It's a lot higher scoring game, I think, than St. John's wanted. But yet they've excelled in the running game yes. to get back in it. Loose ball, there's Sproulis. He's like a cat, and where Dan wrestles to the ground with Daryl Smith. I didn't see exactly how it broke. But the officials stepped in there quickly. Security doing an excellent job here. A crowd very close to entering into that little discussion. And that's when it gets scary. I don't I'll, believe there's any keys being called. If it, break, if it breaks out, I want the guy in the feathers. <laughs> now let's see what happens. Let's go back. There's Smith. Where Dan going up with one hand looked like he was just trying to get it loose. And they just get tangled. Daryl Smith, the first player that Bob Wenzel signed at Rutgers, got tangled up with Werdan. Now Karnaseka is pleading his case to Lumbo. And Werdan over talking to the official as well. Werdan is the type of young man who goes and apologizes after plays. Let's see if he goes over and shakes the hand of Smith. They do. So Smith and Werdan slap five. There is no call. And it will be St. John's possession. No malice here. Just heat. Just, just a lot of guys that have played against each other a lot of years. And they, uh, they're really putting it out there. Handled nicely by Lumbo and company. Yep. Good and well officiated game. They let the kids play. Why not? They're on the playground. <laughs> Nobody officiates there. Harvey. Over goes to Chuck Strolling. Post up. Three-pointer. The guy who's Rocky Mountain High with 74 points has yet to show it to the New York crowd. Boy, if he can get hot tonight. 74 points in a high school game. 32 minutes. 68 to 60. St. John's with nine minutes to play in the ball game. Jones takes the baseline. Dishing to Duckett, and a foul is called. And it's on Wardan for a reach. That's number three in Wardan. That's his third and the team's fourth. No six fouls tonight for the Big East Warriors of this man, Luke Arnseca. But they could use him. Been very intense. Mitchell inbound to Jones. Where Dan kicks it out, but it's Fred Carter back for the RU Knights. Carter. Oh, gorgeous move. Took it right to where Dan and in your face. Where Dan wisely after getting that third one had to be a spectator. Where Dan for Steelers lays it up and in. 70 to 62. Redman with 820 to go. 
20 points from Malik Sealy. St. John's have only given up an average of 63 points per game all year and have only scored 70. And here they are at 70-62 with an eight-point lead, but there's eight minutes to go. So it's a bit above their offensive average. I, don't, I wouldn't want to be either coach and try to pull the reins in now. I still believe that St. John's Bucky has played better in the up-tempo. They certainly have tonight. Maybe the loss of Jason Williams, a little less dependence on that inside game. Singleton will play for Verdad for... St. John's. Remember, we saw St. John's before Williams came back, and they were running a lot in the early part of the year, and then they became more of a half-court club because you tend to change your design according to the talent you have. Good point. 8-10 to go. 70-62. St. John's with the lead. Keith Hughes posting up on Singleton. Strong move by Keith Hughes. 18 points for Hughes, right around his average. Redmond, he had to push Singleton back to get a little room. Singleton with a <laughs> floater. People flying by him, people laying on him, makes no difference. <laughs> 15 for Billy. I think the best way to play him is don't touch him. He's just so comfortable when people snuggle up to him. If he knows where you are and he can feel you, you're in a lot of trouble. Strolling made that play, and on the hell ball, the possession arrow pointing to the Redmen. St. John's has lost three in a row. Rutgers has won five of the last six. Here's Billy's last bucket, Singleton. Watch that. He saddles down, one flies over, and the other one is checking his tonsils. It doesn't make any difference. Craig Carter with the rebound for Rutgers off the miss. Outside to Smith. Lou Harvey having a fine ball game in the backcourt. Carter puts it up and in. 72-66. Going right now with throwing at the small forward spot. The Redmen, a small team on the floor. Rolling. Shooting with confidence. So although that one didn't go down, and a foul called off the rebound, Steely will go to the line for two. That's a very quick team on the floor now for St. John's. Rutgers. We're down on the bench, scrolling into the small forward spot. They've run well all night. This team should run better than uh, any they put on the floor. It's the first time they've gone to the smaller lineup. Gattaca replaces Jones. Interesting substitution by Wenzel. So this has been an up-tempo game. It's a shooting game. He takes out his defensive guard and gets in more of a weapon. Now Fu goes to the bench. David Kane in now for St. John's. Giving Boo just a little blow. He'll be back. Dealey hits the first. He has 21 in the ball game. This is his eighth game of 20 or more. A model of consistency. Out of Talentine High School in the Bronx. We saw Talentine yesterday on MSG. In a terrific ball game, losing the championship for the Metro Classic to St. Anthony's of 36. Great doubleheader, overtime in the first game. Of course, then, and Bryce the King with Bryce the King the winner. Two for three. Missing, and Smith was over the top of Chuck Sproling. And Darrell is called for a foul. And on Rutgers, that is their 15 foul. The Rutgers foul. St. John's is also has five team fouls, and that's Darryl the fourth Smith, that's personal on Darrell Smith. And the team six. Now Lee Perry replaces Hughes for Rutgers. Let's set the floor for you. Duckett and Perry, along with Daryl Smith for Rutgers, with Danica and Carter. Both coaches resting their top gunslingers now with six and a half to go, getting them ready for that final five. Healy, Singleton, Strolling, Kane, and Buchanan on the floor for the Redmen. Kane penetrates. His shot. It'll drop for David Kane. What a bonus. Buchanan, who has not scored, really struggled tonight offensively. Played an excellent defensive game. Boy, that's a bonus when you get that deuce off the bench. That's maybe the first bench. Sproling and Kane, I think, have six points. That's all the bench scoring for the Redmen. And a discontinued dribble called against Lee Perry. 
He threw that ball to Larry Lembo a little hard, but not hard enough to warrant a tee. He replaces Darren Lembo, a tennis player, must have thought he had an overhead right between his eyes. Oh, he did uh, He did put a little topspin on that one, didn't he? Sure did. St. John's a chance to open this game up. They're up by nine with 5.45 to play, and you would think we'll see Lumpkin real soon, and he's back on the floor for Rutgers. I missed him sneak in there. Strolling. Outside the cane. Here's Steeler. Carter knocks it away. Still lose, and Carter gets it again. Good hustle by Craig. Carter penetrates. Beautiful move, and a foul is called in the basket count. <laughs> like the lead boulder in an avalanche. What? <laughs> he just makes no difference. Watch this now. White jerseys bring it out of the way. Here I come. Doesn't matter. Nice smooth shot off the glass. And a spare. <laughs> Here we go. Fearless. Absolutely fearless. Carter has his season high. Previously, it was 14 against Rhode Island. He has 15 tonight. From one of the fine high schools in New York City, academically, Bronx Science. He's three for six from three-point land, but he really is reluctant to take that outside shot. Wow, look at that advantage on the front line for the Redmen. 4.50 to play. Sealy. Rebounded by Strollers. Nice pitch to work in. And Ducky came up with a clean block. I thought it was clean, but a foul is called on Ducky. Ducky thought it was clean. Players foul charged to Anthony Duckett. You mean the judge. This is the best I've seen Chucky Sprawling play. The Denver native draws the defense and dishes down to, to Wardan. Could have been a three-point play. Ducker thought he had it clean. Hughes is back in. Sproling just seems to, like, all of a sudden have this weight lifted from his shoulders. He's playing much more fluidly, like he's not being watched every play. Hard to explain when those heavens open up. Coming off the uh, year for, as a result of Prop 48, just really hasn't played loose. We're down with a big offensive ball game tonight. Well, he stayed out of foul trouble. Didn't get his third one until really late in the second half. We're playing five fouls. And you're out. And we've got a foul called a double foul. It's against, I believe, Hughes and Singleton. And they'll shoot on both ends of the court. A double foul has been charged to Lee Perry of Rutgers. That's his second. It's on and Keith Billy Hughes, Singleton of St. And it's on Billy That's Singleton, second. not Lee Perry. Double foul. The Karnasek is way past the coaching line. His leash is broken. <laughs> He's up there checking. You are absolutely right. You picked up the air, Bruce. Now it's going to have the man satisfied. The Rutgers foul is charged to Keith Hughes. That's his second personal. Okay, so no shots on the double foul. Rutgers will inbound. Lumpkin, wild shot from three-point land. Carter picks it up. Carter penetrates, throws it out of bounds, but at last touch the St. John's player. Carter should have put it up. Carter, uh, he likes to get up in air and then check things out. Uh, be, and before he lands, he wants to make a nice play. He'll learn to keep his feet on the floor. He's strong enough to, to carry that ball with his dribble into the paint. And if he just stays under control, he'll wreak havoc with the defense. Once he leaves the floor, he plays right in their hands. Jane McGinnis in with the bad back for the first time in this fall game. Goes to pass away, and Boo Harvey is there for the Redmen. And the clock now eating at the Scarlet Knights. Nine-point lead for the Redmen with 4.15 to play. Everybody on the, on the uh, Rutgers bench now has appeared in this game. Steelers. Rebound Singleton. 
foul call, basket count. It's on McGinnis. And Philly Singleton just feasts within three feet of the basket. That's his personal domain. The wide body with the good hands. Let's see how high he jumps. I wouldn't say that was a, a, a record-breaking vertical leap. He knows where it's coming off. I'll bet Billy Singleton's a heck of a pool player. Offensive rebounding is a couple of things. One, you got to really want to do it. Two, you got to move and get your spot as that shooter's releasing the ball. You can't wait until it's out of his hand and it's on the glass. He's got a great instinct to overcome the fact that he's not quick and not a great jumper. Tough move by Mike Jones. Mike Jones. the lead to nine. But Rutgers going to have to start putting it up from three-point land, and they do have the capability to come back quickly. Jones is one for one on three-pointers this year, but his definite instinct as a slasher. He wants to take it down inside. Now St. John's can afford to take a little air out of the basketball with 3.30 to play, 25 seconds on the shot clock. This is where that matchup will be tested. You can't come out in force when you're back in that defense. In fact, I'm expecting St. John's to pull him out of it, make him go man. 15 seconds of the shot clock. Scrolling. Harvey for three. Big basket. I think Rutgers needs to go to a half-court trap or something because with that matchup defense, St. John's is going to take it right to the nubs. They may not always get the score, but they're going to run off a lot of clock. Three minutes to play. Scarlet Knights down 12. Lumpkin. Got it. Three points. And that one was from about 25. <laughs> Uh, it's down to nine, and one gets the feeling that we're going to see a long two minutes and 40 seconds of basketball because Rutgers might play that fouling game and trying to get threes on the other end. And they've got the ability with the talent they have. Rutgers has gone man for man. Big bucket underneath by Steely. And it's 84 73 in favor of St. John Steely with 23. Timeout, Rutgers with 2.24 to play. And the Scarlet Knights. Down 11. We'll take a short break. We'll refuel. And there's a look at Earl Duncan, who could not play tonight for Rutgers because of the severely sprained right ankle. Knights hope to get him back Thursday for UMass at a conference game. He's the guy that really helped turn this Rutgers team around. His 40-footer at the buzzer against Duquesne on the road really started the, the resurgence. And there's Jason Williams, who will sit it out the rest of the year for the Redmen with the broken foot. But without the two stars, or two of the stars, we've had a heck of a ball game. I can't imagine this being a better game, even with those two great talents involved. Going back to Earl Duncan, his big, big game, though, was 28 at Missouri, the nation's number one the team. He had eight assists with the 28 and no turnovers. And that was in Columbia. And Missouri has some athletes that can come get you. Free throw shooting in the game. Rutgers not going to the line much. Similar trend as a year ago. Donnell Lumpkin is there now for one and one. Missing the front end. 2.15 to play, both clubs over the limit. Possession arrow favors St. John's. Two timeouts, Redmond, one timeout, Scarlet Knight. When do you start fouling if you're Rutgers, Bucky? Soon. Scrolling. Nice look. Singleton, rather Sealy, getting the roll. Good thing about that, St. John's nice, nicely spread that time, but they didn't forget to look at the basket. Hughes with it. A minute 40 to play. Keith spots up and connects. The lead is 11. Full court pressure. They got to try one swipe at a steal, then they got a foul. A minute 30 left. And there's a good prospect right there. Singleton was scrolling. They got a foul. It's 11 points, a minute 20 seconds. They got a foul. Harvey with it, a minute 14 to go. And nobody fouling. That's all, no, nobody on the uh, Scarlet Knight bench uh, calling for action. But St. John's just cruising out of here. Shot clock down to 14. Rowling's got it, shot clock at 10, game clock at 58 seconds. Still no foul. Five seconds of the shot clock. Rowling guns it, and a foul is called after 44 seconds. Then a foul. 
Not a good defensive trip for RU. Nope. Not organized well against the stall pattern. This is a young Rutgers team out there, but you got to know when you get under two minutes and you're down 11, you got to know what to do out there. And they completely let St. John's Cruz out of here. 48 seconds, down 11, and at the line. It's too bad because it was a great, great effort by Rutgers without Earl Duncan. Everson back in the game for Rutgers. Chuck Sproling at the line. He has six points and has played a terrific defensive game. Just all around, Bruce, the best I've seen him play. For one thing, he's been out there for a while. And I still think until he gets his uh, confidence up, small forward may be his best position. 47 seconds to play. St. John's by 12. Datica to Red. He penetrates. Rebound, single pick. Intercepted by Everson. It goes out of bounds off Rutgers with 31 seconds to play. Well, the story of this game was in the second half, Rutgers opening up with a 17-6 run to go up 55-46, and it looked like the Knights were going to be in control, and then back came St. John. They scored 12 unanswered points to go up 58-55, to and they were never headed after that. And it was Boo Harvey who was the architect in that stretch. Boo came forth big time tonight. The senior gave him leadership and he gave him points. Very impressive performance. Martin lays it in. 87-77, and that should do it. Harvey puts it up. It will count at the buzzer. The basket is good. And the Redmen of St. John end their three-game losing streak with an 89-77 victory over the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. They did it without Jason Williams, and they didn't have a lot of time to recover. Of course, they had 10 games early and went 8-2 and two without Jason, but this was a, a wanted oasis after three straight Big East losses. St. John's still a dangerous basketball team. After the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, their record drops to 11 and 11, but it was a spirited effort. Oh, it's an outstanding college game. As we said, even with, with uh, Williams and with Duncan, it's hard to believe this game could have been any better. Final score, 89 to 77. St. John's will be back in just a moment. For over half a century, Jerry Cosby and Madison Square